My name is Rob Avis and I run two companies right now here in Alberta and actually the companies operate right across Canada and even globally. One is Verge Permaculture and the other one is Adaptive Habitat. Verge Permaculture is an education company and we've been running it for close to 10 years and it specializes in teaching permaculture design to a massive range of individuals from young to old. And if you don't know what permaculture is, permaculture is the design of sustainable human habitat. And so basically we look at uh, how we meet people's needs in a way that is beneficial to the ecosystems that we depend upon. Um, the contrary paradigm to that is something you've probably already heard of or probably have thought about but have never put words to which is this idea that's presented in the newspapers, on Facebook and YouTube, basically anywhere you go and get information. It's a pernicious belief that humans are inherently destructive. And there's certainly a lot of evidence to indicate that um, to be true. However, if we dig a little deeper, what we can find is plenty of examples of how humans have actually been agents of regeneration and repair globally and so permaculture is kind of like engineering in that it's a design system that allows us to meet our food, energy, water, shelter needs while enhancing the ecosystems that we depend upon. The other company that we run is Adaptive Habitat and that's our consulting and engineering company and what we do there is we help other people uh, in a more kind of bespoke and tailored way uh, to meet their needs and so we'll go in and advise on how they build their home um, to meet their goals, how they grow their food, how they collect or harvest and distribute water on their property both for potable but also for irrigation requirements um, and even sometimes how they make a livelihood from the land that they own uh, and so both of those two companies basically kind of work together. Uh, one provides information to large number of a large number of people so that they can kind of do it on their own and the other one is very bespoken uh, we help individuals on specific issues or problems or opportunities so originally uh, I went to the University of Alberta where I studied mechanical engineering and from there I ended up in the oil and gas industry as a pipeline engineer and I was the guy that basically brought the pipelines and the gas facilities online so that cities uh, could have natural gas and refineries could get oil to produce gasoline and diesel. I was uh, at work one day and I got an email from a colleague who uh, included a YouTube video from a guy named Jeff Lawton who lives in, lived in Australia. And the video is still on YouTube today, actually. It's called Greening the Desert, and I encourage you to go watch it. And it described this gentleman named Jeff who went to the lowest place on Earth, hypersaline soils, completely desertified, nothing left, basically just dust, in the Dead Sea Valley of Jordan. And he turned this meaningless piece of land into a self-sustaining ecosystem in a very short period of time using very simple techniques and ideas and so this is where I learned about permaculture and I remember um, picking up my calculator at the time I'm an engineer and figuring out how many hours of life energy I had on this earth if I was lucky and it turns out that most of us live for about 600,000 hours and so at the time I had burned through about a third of those hours and I reflected on that and I said, well, how do I want to spend the next two thirds of my life? What do I want to say that I've achieved at the end of my life? And I realized that um, maintaining status quo was not how I wanted to spend my life. And I, I have nothing against the oil and gas industry at all. Um, but I wanted to contribute to the next thing. After watching the video, I called my wife and said that we had to quit our jobs and so both of us took a leap of faith and we started our travels around the world to try and find um, a different way and so we uh, spent six months in Denmark studying renewable energy given that we were both energy engineers that was a um, a move that made sense to us 
And uh, everywhere we went, we started learning about more about permaculture. This idea kept coming up over and over again. And what we discovered was that the food that we eat three times a day is actually a much tougher problem to solve than repowering the world. Denmark's almost already repowered themselves um, in a way that, that is beneficial to the planet. And so after leaving Denmark, we traveled the world some more. We ended up in Australia, the Middle East, uh, most of the U.S., Mexico, parts of Canada, um, trying to understand how we could actually continue to, to feed ourselves as a species uh, while enhancing the ecosystems around us. We knew how to power ourselves. We had to figure out how to feed ourselves. After all of our travels, we came back and we started Verge Permaculture, and the rest is kind of history. And we've been doing this for over a decade now, and uh, I've taught literally thousands of students, and uh, we'll continue to do this probably for the rest of our lives. The last question is, is to provide some advice to people that want to start their career in sustainability. Um, it's certainly, it's certainly easier to operate a career now in the kind of realm of sustainability or regeneration than it was 10 years ago, but it's still generally an uphill battle. Um, generally the work uh, pays a little bit less, um, but not always. Um, there are fewer jobs in the kind of regenerative sustainable field than there are in the kind of conventional field, but that's also changing. Um, I think the the main thing that I would advise people is to, to really look inside and, and try and understand you know, what your, your core ethics are, what drives you, um, and seek out information and opportunities that align with your ethics and your passion. Um, one of the things that has held true for most of the last 10 years is and, and kind of kept me going has been that I'm I'm here because I love it more than anything else and I cannot imagine doing anything else than what I'm doing right now um, every day I wake up I'm pretty much I mean maybe that's a bit of a I'd say 95% of the days I'm excited to get up and do what I do um, Anybody that tells you that they're excited 100% of the time is lying to you. Uh, you're going to have bad days, but the majority of my days are incredible. Uh, I meet incredible people, um, and in the work that I do, I'm always on the cutting edge, so I'm always learning. Um, and so you, you need to also cultivate um, a desire to learn or, or be interested in learning for the rest of your life because this field is emergent. Uh, we're still figuring it all out. Um, and... The other really interesting thing is that I like to think about this field as uh, an approaching tsunami. And so the time to get onto your surfboard is right now because there's a wave coming right behind us. And, um, and the people that start paddling before it seems like they should be paddling are the ones that are going to ride that wave in. And we need an army of people. We need an army of surfers to take this challenge on. It's absolutely enormous. I don't have time in this video to discuss it. Um, but um, it needs to be done, and it needs really intelligent, thoughtful, passionate, and empathetic people that are clear about, um, about their ethics and why uh, they're doing what they do. So I hope you found that a little bit inspiring, and um, I encourage you to reach out to us if you want to chat about any of this stuff. Uh, you can find us at vergepermaculture.ca, and um, I look forward to paddling alongside you once you get through your program. Thanks so much.